So, I'm starting a new channel, and I'm going to be talking about a great idea that I have. And that idea is uh, getting a boat. Well, maybe getting a boat. I'd also like to build myself a boat. At first I was looking at stuff like van life and things like this, and you know, this looks okay. Kind of. I mean, I could see it working for me. I, I don't really move around too much. I work at the computer all the time, so what else am I going to do? But compare this to a boat. And suddenly it's like night and day. Boats are more mobile. You don't got to deal with uh, gas stations. You don't got to deal with traffic. Uh, you can fit a lot more on them. Multiple beds. You can have a kitchen, bathroom. You can't have that on a typical vans. Well, even if you have it on a in a van or a caravan, you'll need to empty it out at certain designated areas. But if you're sailing around uh, in, on blue water, you can just dump it in the ocean. Better use a <laughs> composting toilet. I know a lot of people think that's pretty bad, but apparently that's a very common thing, just dumping it in the ocean. The ocean's pretty big, so I think it can handle it. Anyway, as I've been looking into more boats, Apparently, the whole wooden boat thing isn't a, a whole thing anymore. Now boats are all fiberglass or steel or aluminum. Some wood boats around, but apparently they're a huge pain in the butt and they leak water all over. So steel is durable, of course. It's very strong, but it's very heavy and slow. The thing with, so usually if you're looking at like a 30 foot boat, 35 foot boat, this is a 30 foot boat, um, fiberglass is the most common. And the problem with fiberglass, I guess it comes down to the cost. Fiberglass can last a very long time, but it can also have a lot of issues that makes it not last a long time. So the way that they do it is they have like a, a core in the fiberglass of like plywood and then that's not for strength it's basically just for the form and then on each side of the plywood they put the fiberglass on with epoxy and that's how they build it the problem is if there's any holes anywhere or if water gets into the center somehow the the core will rot out Newer ones, they have like plastic cores and things like that, foam cores you can have. But those, the, the fancier you get, the more expensive they get. And really, with my budget, I'd probably get some crappy boat from the 70s when they were first starting to make these fiberglass ones for a couple thousand dollars, maybe. Like $10,000 for a boat? Yeah, okay. Maybe. If I don't really have that. So... And at that point, why get a boat that could have those issues later on? Like, it's not just the core rotting out. It's also the fiberglass can start to become delaminated. Water can start to impede into it, and they call it osmosis. And then you get blisters in the fiberglass. Apparently, fiberglass is easy to work with, but, uh, yeah, you just take a grinder to it. Grind out the stuff that's having an issue, and then put in a new fiberglass with epoxy. So I guess that's one advantage. The thing with steel, on the other hand, it's it's less less trouble. Less can go wrong with it. You need to cover it up and keep it from corroding. But other than that, it's steel. You weld it. And if it breaks, you, you cut it out and you add more steel to it. The problem with steel boats that I've found is they're very thin. They're like six millimeters, which is, you see how than this is, this kit, it's like uh, a quarter of an inch thickness, which is good, that's strong, it's, it's, there are a lot of pieces, a lot of welding that you got to do for it. Um, the problem is corrosion, it'll start eating away your hole, and after a decade or two, if you leave it unchecked, it can just eat through your hole or make it too thin to be safe. That, and it's also very expensive to buy a steel boat. So if I was looking at a fiberglass boat, that's too expensive. You know, finding a 30, 35 foot steel boat 
that's affordable in good shape would be even harder. And that's when I got the idea. Now this might sound crazy, but to build my own boat. And that maybe a lot of people have had this idea in the past. And the issue is trying to build a boat from steel from scratch. You hear about old people that have tried to do this and then they die because they've spent like 20, 30, 40 years building their steel boat. It becomes more of a hobby at that point than actually about sailing and moving on a boat. Um, but this is where I got a great idea. Tank cars. What about train tank cars? It's already generally the shape of a boat. You know, kind of. It's got a like, rounded bottom. I guess if you like envision it cut in half, that's like the bottom part of the boat, then point out the edge and point out the back. And, and the thing about tank cars, steel tank cars at least, is they are half an inch to an inch thick steel. Like these are serious business all around, everything, the caps, everything. There are different types. Some have sleeves in them and are insulated. And But just the most common type are all over. And the thing that makes it great is there's so many of them and there's so many being decommissioned all the time that you can find them for sale as scrap. And what they, they use them for is like uh, culverts under roads, like under roads like this, for water to pass through. Because it's such a sturdy amount of steel already there. And they sell it for scrap prices. And I, I looked up the price of how much, like half an inch, maybe it was three-fourths of an inch that I looked up. But of 35-foot long steel pipe like this, how much would it cost? It would cost like something like... $1.7,000 in scrap price, and that's what they saw it at, scrap price. If you buy it from a place that's selling it already cut up, uh, used as a culvert, they jack up the price way way high since all the processing that they've done for it, but I, I bet you could find it from a railroad company that's just decommissioning their cars, and they'd sell it to you for scrap. And if you start from that, these things can go up to diameter of 10 feet and 10 feet that's uh you know it's not huge that is way too small but 10 feet that's enough to put a boat in that's enough to i think it worked out if you built a square room inside of a 10 foot diameter it, it worked out to be seven feet and that's as uh, wide as a long boat in the uk they have them go up and down the channels so that type of room, it's, it's not that bad. And if you go up a, against the walls more and you climb up on the walls before you build your your um, your structure for the room, you could extend that out and you could get a wider room out of that. So maybe like eight, eight feet maybe. And then you're, you're talking about a decent sized room and you can get them up to like 40 foot long. So that's perfect. So I've been taking this idea Right. I'm seeing what I can do with it, you know, because I know how to use 3D programs. You should learn. Uh, basically, take a car, a tank car, cut out a section on the top. It's got its caps on it. And then, check this out. You see? You just build a structure on top of it, like a, a more traditional boat. This is more cosmetic up here. Um, you know, a top. But you got, you got your deck, and then you'd have tons of room inside of this boat. You point out the, the, the front, so you get like a V-berth up here. And uh, so the problem with this, this rounded bottom, it's not very stable, of course, and it's got a lot of steel on top, too, since you're not trying to process this too much. You're just trying to get this boat done as fast as you can. Uh, so to, to counter that, I thought the best way would be to get additional pipes. Steel pipes, you can buy steel pipes of different diameters, um, and then turning it into a trimaran. And these would just be completely closed. Like, you could open them up and store stuff in them, I guess. 
But if you just completely close them, this thing would be unsinkable. Because as long as these two things are, the, the amas are functional and closed and not punctured, it could flip over and it's not going to sink. As long as they're big enough. And I looked at the displacement of how much a uh, car this big, how much that much steel. Like, it's a lot of steel. You think it's super heavy. But the amount it goes down into the water is just like a couple feet. It's ridiculous. And you wouldn't, you, I guess you could use a keel on this to keep it upright instead of doing the amas. But again, that complicates it. You'd have to get a huge lead keel or a steel keel attach it and then you're you're dealing with more draft so you can't go into as shallow of an area. Uh, trimorans can flip if the wave is uh, higher than the length of the or the width of the boat but at this uh, like okay it's a catastrophic event but again it won't sink if you're using amas that are sealed and that's the advantage. And then I've been trying to figure out like how much room is actually in this area, like measuring it out and building the seven foot, or here's a seven and a half foot room. And it's actually really roomy. Like you can get a little, little uh, benches in here, right? Little seats, you get a little seating area, some tables, build a little kitchen. Yeah, I think it's like a great uh, solution. There's a lot more that goes into a boat, of course. This is just the general idea of using a tank car as a base and trying to build something aesthetically okay around it. Because right? the less processing you do on this, the better. So all these other attachments would be just more steel. Get thinner steel plate, perhaps, because at that point you're not really dealing with structure. I don't know if you need to reinforce inside, like these structures here, coming across here is uh, reinforcing a lot, I would imagine, like this, especially if it's just solid steel. But uh, inside you could also do bulkheads to separate the rooms and add more structural support. And then you'd have to figure out how to support the amas, like they wouldn't be this thick, of course, like however thick it would be, however you do that. Um, but this is just the beginning. I also have some other ideas for how to handle propulsion because sails are nice and you know you could fit sails on it but then you wouldn't be able to have uh, area up here like I guess you'd have to do yeah you have to put your sail maybe forward more a lot more Now we can have the other bit that sticks out like this and not run into your cabin. The thing with this is I kind of wanted to make it more of a centered cabin instead of pushing it way up on the back like they sometimes do. This like feels a little bit more secure and it also opens up this space in the back for another room. That's one of the advantages of center cabins is you have more room back here to do, to do stuff. Um, no, it's just an idea. Yeah. Anyway, this channel, I'll be talking a lot about boat stuff as I learn about boat stuff. Maybe if I get enough money, I'll start building my boat, get some steel. You know, get a tank car, find a place to build it. Uh, I think all together, like the steel itself isn't that expensive if you buy scrap steel, but all together, I think it's it gets expensive fast, right? You're talking about equipment and holding tanks for water and different type of uh, you know put in an oven and a toilet. And power, you need to wire the thing and like do solar or something like that. Uh, yeah, so I think maybe like thirty thousand to do a nice boat, but built around a tank car. And that's my that's my thought about the whole thing. Yeah.